But children who develop breath holding spell, they hold their breath in expiration. This is a important point on which MCQs in the past have been asked. Question number three. Two year old child with persistent breath holding spells is referred to you from local doctor. You find that the child has been started on low dose iron supplementation, which among the following is false. So the child is basically having breath holding spell. He has already been started on iron supplementation. So which among the following is false. So basically you are supposed to talk about, you are supposed to know about breath holding spell, right? Breath holding spell, you know it already. Uh, these usually start between six to 18 months peak around two years of age and spontaneously improve by four to five years of age. But during the time they happen, they are a constant source of uh, anxiety and embarrassment to the parent. Sometimes it can cause some problems in the child also. It's a reflex event. It is not a malingering which is happening. It is a reflex behavioral disorder. A uh, child will cry, child will hold breath in expiration and become either cyanotic or pallor will develop. So then we have two types of spells. We have a cyanotic spell and we have a pallor spell. Why am I giving this uh, thing, uh, this entire introduction to you so that you know the context that we are talking about. The purpose of this MCQ discussion is not only, you know, to mechanically show you the question, show you the slide of answer, but it's a discussion thing I'm trying to do here. So which among the following is false? Let us have a look at the options here. The first option says cyanotic spells are more common than pallid spells. It is a true statement. You know that cyanotic spells are more common. It is a thing which you have been reading from OPG days also. Child holds breath in expiration. Again, it is a true statement. So both A and B are true statement. They are asking false. So answer has to be C or D without even looking at them. Now, important thing about option number B is, see, whenever I have to voluntarily hold my breath, it will always be in inspiration. For example, if I have to do a deep sea diving or I, if I have to jump from a height into uh, a swimming pool and I know swimming, I don't know, but if I know swimming, what I'll reflexly do is I'll hold my breath in inspiration but children who develop breath holding spell they hold their breath in expiration this is a important point on which mcqs in the past have been asked so they hold breath in expiration it is also a true statement option number c says piracetam is now the first line drug for managing such patient we'll come to this statement again and iron supplementation is an effective therapy and trial is needed Trial of iron supplementation is needed in most patients. It is also a true statement. It has been found that iron plays an important role in catecholamine metabolism in the central nervous system. And iron deficiency, even though the child may not have iron deficiency anemia, still, if the tissue iron stores are low, you may have a situation where the autonomic dysfunction can develop. We now know that breath holding spell is a type of autonomic dysfunction and low iron stores have been found to be a correctable cause of these patients and so low dose iron supplementation has been recommended as a trial in all these patients. If they have anemia, good, you have to treat the anemia. But even if the anemia is not there, still low dose iron supplementation, the dose uh, is not uniform, you know, uh, there is no consensus on that. Uh, in my practice and what I have seen my uh, superiors and my peers give is dose somewhere in the range of 2 to 3 mg per kg per day of iron. Because above 3 is your, your iron deficiency anemia dose. So about 2 to 3 mg per kg per day given in these children has been found to improve the outcome, reduce the number of spells which are happening. So the local doctor has start, done well. He has started the patient on low dose iron supplementation. It is the true statement. Now we are le left with option C, which is false. And so this is the correct answer. So piracetam, please remember, uh, it has been found to be effective in certain studies. Piracetam has been found to be effective in those spells where it is associated with hyperactivity. Uh, it has been mentioned in some review articles as well as an article in Indian Academy of Pediatrics as well. Indian Pediatrics also has an article on that. But piracetam is not FDA approved and it is certainly not the first line therapy. Remember, vast majority are going to improve uh, with as the age advances. So what are the, the answer to this question is obviously C. So what are the key points about breath holding spell that you should know? Let us summarize here. Breath holding spell. I'm not writing the thing which you already know. 
just summarizing the key points from MCQ at super speciality point of view. They begin between 6 to 18 months. They peak somewhere around 2 years of age and they improve or disappear spontaneously between 4 to 5 years of age, right? This is the first thing to know. Second, breath holding spell is a reflex neurological disorder. It is not a habit disorder. It is not characterized as a habit disorder. Please remember this. Third thing, breath holding spell, uh, many cases, no cause can be found. But among identifiable cause, among identifiable cause, you can find that autonomic dysfunction, autonomic dysfunction is a culprit in majority of these patients. And autonomic dysfunction is often associated with iron deficiency. I am not writing iron deficiency anemia, iron deficiency overall in the body, right? And uh, there are two types of spells, two types of spells. You have cyanotic spell where the child becomes cyanotic and second is pallid spell where the child becomes pale. Cyanotic spell is more common. Cyanotic spell is the one which is associated with increase in the sympathetic activity. This variety can also have increased intrapulmonary shunting which can exacerbate or lead to cyanosis. Whereas pallid spells are usually associated with increased parasympathetic activity or vagal discharge and that is why pallid spells can be associated with syncope also. So, syncope can be seen in pallid spells. Therapy wise, avoid any kind of reinforcement in the child. So, behavioral wise, you should avoid positive and negative reinforcement. You should give iron supplementation in virtually all of these patients. And uh, piracetam can be tried in severe cases, those especially those who have hyperactivity along with breath holding spell, but it is not uniformly given, not uniformly used, right? So, this is, these are the key points about breath holding spell that you should remember. Now, moving further, so answer to this question is obviously C, which is a false statement. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from PrepLadder.